Pele. Pele and O Rei redirect here. For the Hawaiian goddess, see Pele, deity. For the Portuguese footballer with the same nickname, see Eusebio. For other uses, see Pele, disambiguation. In this Portuguese name, the first or maternal family name is Arantz and the second or paternal family name is Nascimento. Edson Arantz do Nascimento, Brazilian Portuguese, Edson Arantz do Nascimento, October 23, 1940 to 29 December 2022, better known by his nickname Pele, Portuguese pronunciation, Pielo, was a Brazilian professional footballer who played as a forward. Widely regarded as one of the greatest players of all time, he was among the most successful and popular sports figures of the 20th century. In 1999, he was named Athlete of the Century by the International Olympic Committee and was included in the time list of the 100 most important people of the 20th century. In 2000, Pelé was voted World Player of the Century by the International Federation of Football History and Statistics IFFHS, and was one of the two joint winners of the FIFA Player of the Century. His 1,279 goals in 1,363 games, which includes friendlies, is recognized as a Guinness World Record. Pelé began playing for Santos at age 15 and the Brazil national team at 16. During his International career, he won three FIFA World Cups, 1958, 1962, and 1970, the only player to do so and the youngest player to win a World Cup, 17. He was nicknamed O Ray, the King, following the 1958 tournament. With 77 goals in 92 games for Brazil, Pelé held the record as the national team's top goal scorer for over 50 years. At club level, he is Santos's all-time top goalscorer with 643 goals in 659 games. In a golden era for Santos, he led the club to the 1962 and 1963 Copa Libertadores and to the 1962 and 1963 Intercontinental Cup. Credited with connecting the phrase, the beautiful game, with football, Pelé's electrifying playing penchant for spectacular goals made him a star around the world and his teams toured internationally to take full advantage of his popularity. During his playing days, Pelé was for a period the best-paid athlete in the world. After retiring in 1977, Pelé was a worldwide ambassador for football and made many acting in commercial ventures. In 2010, he was named the honorary president of the New York Cosmos. Averaging almost a goal per game throughout his career, Pelé was adept at striking the ball with either foot in addition to anticipating his opponent's movements on the field. While predominantly a striker, he could also drop deep and take on a playmaking role, providing assists with his vision and passing ability, and he would also use his dribbling skills to go past opponents. In Brazil, he was hailed as a national hero for his accomplishments in football and for his outspoken support of policies that improved the social conditions of the poor. Emergence at the 1958 World Cup, where he became a black global sporting star, was a source of inspiration. Throughout his career and in his retirement, Pelé received numerous individual and team awards for his performance on the field, his record-breaking achievements, and his legacy in the sport. Early Years Pelé was born Edson Arantz do Nascimento on October 23, 1940 in Tres Carecos, Minas Gerai, the son of Fluminense footballer Dandinho, born Joao Ramos do Nascimento, and Celeste Arantz, born November 1922. He was the elder of two siblings, with brother Zoka also playing for Santos, albeit not as successfully. He was named after the American inventor Thomas Edison. His parents decided to remove the I and call him Edson, but there was a typo on his birth certificate, leading many documents to show his name as Edison, not Edson, as he was called. He was originally nicknamed Daiko by his family. He received the nickname Pele during his school days, when, it is claimed, he was given it because of his pronunciation of the name of his favorite player, local Vasco da Gama goalkeeper Bile, which he misspoke but the more he complained the more it stuck. In his autobiography released in 
2006, Pele stated he had no idea what the name means, nor did his old friends. Apart from the assertion that the name is derived from that of bile, the word has no meaning in Portuguese. Pele grew up in poverty in Bauru in the state of Sao Paulo. He earned extra money by working in tea shops as a servant. Taught to play by his father, he could not afford a proper football and usually played with either a sock stuffed with newspaper and tied with string or a grapefruit. He played for several amateur teams in his youth, including Seat de Setembro, Canto do Rio, Sao Paulinho, and Ameriquinha. Pele led Bauru Atletico Clube Juniors, coached by Waldemar de Brito, to two Sao Paulo State Youth Championships. In his mid-teens, he played for an indoor football team called Radium. Indoor football had just become popular in Bauru when Pele began playing it. He was part of the first futsal, indoor football, competition in the region. Pele and his team won the first championship and several others. According to Pele, futsal, indoor football, presented difficult challenges, he said it was a lot quicker than football on the grass, and that players were required to think faster because everyone is close to each other in the pitch. Pele credits futsal for helping him think better on the spot. In addition, futsal allowed him to play with adults when he was about 14 years old. In one of the tournaments he participated in, he was initially considered too young to play, but eventually went on to end up top scorer with 14 or 15 goals. That gave me a lot of confidence, Pele said, I knew then not to be afraid of whatever might come. Club Career 1956-1962, Early Years with Santos and Declared a National Treasure 1962-1965, Copa Libertadores Success 1965-1974, Ol Malesimo and Final Years with Santos International Career Pelé's first international match was a 2-1 defeat against Argentina on July 7, 1957 at the Maracana. In that match, he scored his first goal for Brazil aged 16 years and 9 months, and he remains the youngest goal scorer for his country. 1958 World Cup 1959 South American Championship 1962 World Cup 1966 World Cup 1970 World Cup Style of play Pele has also been known for connecting the phrase, the beautiful game, with football. A prolific goal scorer, he was known for his ability to anticipate opponents in the area and finish off chances with an accurate and powerful shot with either foot. Pele was also a hard-working team player, and a complete forward, with exceptional vision and intelligence, who was recognized for his precise passing and ability to link up with teammates and provide them with assists. In his early career, he played in a variety of attacking positions. Although he usually operated inside the penalty area as a main striker or center forward, his wide range of skills also allowed him to play in a more withdrawn role, as an inside forward or second striker, or out wide. In his later career, he took on more of a deeper playmaking role behind the strikers, often functioning as an attacking midfielder. Pele's unique playing style combined speed, creativity, and technical skill with physical power, stamina, and athleticism. His excellent technique, balance, flair, agility, and dribbling skills enabled him to beat opponents with the ball, and frequently saw him use sudden changes of direction and elaborate feints to get past players, such as his trademark move, the Dreable Davaka. Another one of his signature moves was the Paradinha, or Little Stop. Despite his relatively small stature, 1.73 meters, 5 feet 8 inches, he excelled in the air, due to his heading accuracy, timing, and elevation. Renowned for his bending shots, he was also an accurate free-kick taker, and penalty taker, although he often refrained from taking penalties, stating that he believed it to be a cowardly way to score. Pelé was also known to be a fair and highly influential player, who stood out for his charismatic leadership and sportsmanship on the pitch. 
His warm embrace of Bobby Moore following the Brazil vs England game at the 1970 World Cup is viewed as the embodiment of sportsmanship, with the New York Times stating the image captured the respect that two great players had for each other. As they exchange jerseys, touches, and looks, the sportsmanship between them is all in the image. No gloating, no fist pumping from Pele. No despair, no defeatism from Bobby Moore. Pele also earned a reputation for often being a decisive player for his teams, due to his tendency to score crucial goals in important matches. Legacy Among the most successful and popular sports figures of the 20th century, Pele is one of the most lauded players in the history of football and has been frequently ranked the best player ever. Following his emergence at the 1958 World Cup he was nicknamed O. Ray, the King, among his contemporaries, Dutch star Johan Cruyff stated, Pelé was the only footballer who surpassed the boundaries of logic. Brazil's 1970 World Cup winning captain Carlos Alberto Torres opined, his great secret was improvisation. Those things he did were in one moment. He had an extraordinary perception of the game. According to Tosteo, his strike partner at the 1970 World Cup, Pelé was the greatest, he was simply flawless. Pitch he is always smiling and upbeat. You never see him bad-tempered. He loves being Pele. His Brazilian teammate Clodoaldo commented on the adulation he witnessed, in some countries they wanted. To touch him, in some they wanted to kiss him. In others they even kissed the ground he walked. On. I thought it was beautiful, just beautiful. According to Franz Beckenbauer, West Germany's 1974 World Cup winning captain, Pele is the greatest player of all time. He reigned supreme for 20 years. There's no one to compare with him. Former Real Madrid and Hungary star Ferenc Puskas stated, the greatest player in history was Di Stefano. To classify Pele as a player. He was above that. Just Fontaine, French striker and the leading scorer at the 1958 World Cup said, when I saw Pelé play, it made me feel I should hang up my boots. England's 1966 FIFA World Cup winning captain Bobby Moore commented, Pelé was the most complete player I've ever seen, he had everything. Eat. Magic in the air. Quick. Powerful. Could beat people with skill. Could outrun people. Only 5 feet and 8 inches tall, yet he seemed a giant of an athlete on the pitch. Perfect balance and impossible vision. He was the greatest. Because he could do anything and everything on a football pitch. I remember Joao Saldanha though. Coach being asked by a Brazilian journalist who was the best goalkeeper in his squad. He said Pelé. The man could play in any position, former Manchester United striker and member of England's 1966 FIFA World Cup winning team Sir Bobby Charlton stated, I sometimes feel as though football was invented for this magical player. During the 1970 World Cup, when Manchester United defender Paddy Crerand, who was part of the ITV panel, was asked, how do you spell Pele, he replied, easy, G-O-D. Following Pele's death, Former Brazilian international and World Cup winner Ronaldo stated that his legacy transcends generations. Ronaldo's teammate for club and country, Roberto Carlos, also expressed gratitude towards Pele, saying that the football world thanks you for everything you did for us. Many of such tributes were issued after Pele's death at the age of 82. Personal Life Relationships and Children Pele married three times and had several affairs, fathering seven children in all. In 1966, Pele married Rosemarie dos Reis Calbay. They had two daughters, Cully Cristina, born 13 January 1967, who married Arthur De Luca, and Jennifer, born in 1978, as well as one son, Edson, Idinho, B. August 27, 1970. The couple divorced in 1982. In May 2014, Edinho was sentenced to 33 years in jail for laundering money from drug trafficking. On appeal, the sentence was reduced to 12 years and 10 months. 
From 1981 to 1986, Pele was romantically linked with TV presenter Suxa. She was 17 when they started dating. In April 1994, Pele married psychologist and gospel singer Assyria Lamo Satius, who gave birth on September 28, 1996 to twins Joshua and Celeste through fertility treatments. The couple divorced in 2008. Pele had at least two more children from affairs. Sandra Machado, who was born from an affair Pele had in 1964 with a housemaid, Anisia Machado, fought for years to be acknowledged by Pele, who refused to submit to DNA tests. Pele finally relented after a court-ordered DNA test proved she was his daughter. Sandra Machado died of cancer in 2006. At the age of 73, Pele announced his intention to marry 41-year-old Marcia Aoki, a Japanese-Brazilian importer of medical equipment from Panapolis, Sao Paulo, whom he had been dating since 2010. They first met in the mid-1980s in New York, before meeting again in 2008. They married in July 2016. Politics In January 1995, he was appointed by Fernando Cardoso as Minister of Sports. During his tenure, multiple reforms against corruption in state football associations were presented. He resigned from the post on April 30, 1998. During the 2013 protests in Brazil, Pelé asked for people to put aside the demonstrations and support the Brazil national team. On June 1, 2022, Pele published an open letter to the president of Russia Vladimir Putin on his Instagram account, in which he made a public plea to stop the evil and unjustified Russian invasion of Ukraine. Religion A Catholic, Pele donated a signed jersey to Pope Francis. Accompanied by a signed football from Ronaldo Nazario, it is located in one of the Vatican museums. Health In 1977, Brazilian media reported that Pele had his right kidney removed. In November 2012, Pele underwent a successful hip operation. In December 2017, Pele appeared in a wheelchair at the 2018 World Cup draw in Moscow where he was pictured with President Vladimir Putin and Argentine footballer Diego Maradona. A month later, he collapsed from exhaustion and was taken to hospital. In 2019, after a hospitalization because of a urinary tract infection, Pele underwent surgery to remove kidney stones. In February 2020, his son Adinho reported that Pele was unable to walk independently and reluctant to leave home, ascribing his condition to a lack of rehabilitation following his hip operation. In September 2021, Pele had surgery to remove a tumor on the right side of his colon. Although his eldest daughter Kuli stated he was doing well, he was reportedly readmitted to intensive care a few days later, before finally being released on September 30, 2021 to begin chemotherapy. In November 2022, ESPN Brazil reported that Pele had been taken to hospital with general swelling, along with cardiac issues and concerns that his chemotherapy treatment was not having the expected effect, his daughter Kuli stated there was no emergency. Ball. In 1994, Pele was appointed a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador. 183. In 1995, Brazilian President Fernando Henrique Cardoso appointed Pele to the position of Extraordinary Minister for Sport. During this time he proposed legislation to reduce corruption in Brazilian football, which became known as the Pele Law. Cardoso eliminated the post of sports minister in 1998. In 2001, Pele was accused of involvement in a corruption scandal that stole $700,000 from UNICEF. It was claimed that money given to Pele's company for a benefit match was not returned after it was cancelled, although nothing was proven, and it was denied by UNICEF. In 1997, he received an honorary knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II at a ceremony in Buckingham Palace. Pele also helped inaugurate the 2006 FIFA World Cup, alongside supermodel Claudia Schiffer. In 1993, 
Pelé publicly accused the Brazilian football administrator Ricardo Teixeira of corruption after Pelé's television company was rejected in a contest for the Brazilian domestic rights to the 1994 World Cup. Pelé's accusations led to an eight-year feud between the pair. As a consequence of the affair, the president of FIFA, Joao Havlang, Teixeira's father-in-law, banned Pelé from the draw for the 1994 FIFA World Cup in Las Vegas. Criticisms over the ban were perceived to have damaged Havlange's chances of re-election as FIFA's president in 1994. In 1976, Pelé was on a Pepsi-sponsored trip in Lagos, Nigeria, when the military attempted a coup. Pelé was trapped in a hotel together with Arthur Ashe and other tennis pros, who were participating in the interrupted 1976 Lagos WCT tournament. Pelé and his crew eventually left the hotel to stay at the residence of Brazil's ambassador as they could not leave the country for a couple of days. Later the airport was opened and Pelé left the country disguised as a pilot. Pelé has published several autobiographies, starred in documentary films, and composed musical pieces, including Sergio Mendes' soundtrack for the film Pelé directed by François Reichenbach in 1977. He appeared in the 1981 film Escape to Victory, about a World War II-era football match between Allied prisoners of war and a German team. Pelé starred alongside other footballers of the 1960s and 1970s, with actors Michael Caine and Sylvester Stallone. In 1969, Pelé starred in a telenovela called O.S. Estranos, about first contact with aliens. It was created to drum up interest in the Apollo missions. In 2001, he had a cameo role in the football satire film Mike Bassett, England manager. Pelé was asked to participate in the 2006 ESPN documentary film Once in a Lifetime, The Extraordinary Story of the New York Cosmos, but declined when the producers refused to pay his requested $100,000 fee. Pelé appeared at the 2006 World Economic Forum in Davos and spoke on the subject titled, Can a Ball Change the World? The Role of Sports in Development. In November 2007, Pelé was in Sheffield, England, to mark the 150th anniversary of the world's oldest football club. Sheffield FC Pelé was the guest of honor at Sheffield's anniversary match against Inter Milan at Bramall Lane. As part of his visit, Pelé opened an exhibition which included the first public showing in 40 years of the original handwritten rules of football. Pelé scouted for Premier League club Fulham in 2002. He made the draw for the qualification groups for the 2006 FIFA World Cup Finals. On August 1, 2010, Pelé was introduced as the honorary president of a revived New York Cosmos, aiming to field a team in Major League Soccer. In August 2011, ESPN reported that Santos was considering bringing him out of retirement for a cameo role in the 2011 FIFA Club World Cup, although this turned out to be false. The most notable area of Pelé's life since football was his ambassadorial work. In 1992, he was appointed a UN ambassador for ecology and the environment. He was also awarded Brazil's gold medal for outstanding services to the sport in 1995. In 2012, Pelé was awarded an honorary degree from the University of Edinburgh for significant contribution to humanitarian and environmental causes, as well as his sporting achievements. In 2009, Pelé assisted the Rio de Janeiro bid for the 2016 Summer Olympics. In July 2009, he spearheaded the Rio 2016 presentation to the Association of National Olympic Committees of Africa General Assembly in Abuja, Nigeria. On August 12, 2012, Pelé was an attendee at the 2012 Olympic Hunger Summit hosted by British Prime Minister David Cameron at 10 Downing Street, London part of a series of international efforts which have sought to respond to the return of hunger as a high-profile global issue. Later on the same day, Pelé appeared at the closing ceremony of the 2012 Summer Olympics in London, following the handover section to the next host city for the 2016 Summer Olympics, Rio de Janeiro. In March 2016, 
Pele filed a lawsuit against Samsung Electronics in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois seeking 30 million U.S. dollars in damages claiming violations under the Lanham Act for false endorsement and a state law claim for violation of his right of publicity. The suit alleged that at one point, Samsung and Pele came close to entering into a licensing agreement for Pele to appear in a Samsung advertising campaign, but Samsung abruptly pulled out of the negotiations. The October 2015 Samsung ad in question included a partial face shot of a man who allegedly, very closely resembles, Pele and also a superimposed high-definition television screen next to the image of the man featuring a modified bicycle or scissors kick, often used by Pele. The case was settled out of court several years later. In addition to his ambassadorial work, Pele supported various charitable causes, such as Action for Brazil's Children, Gauls Pela Vida, SOS Children's Villages, The Littlest Lamb, Prince's Rainforests Project and many more. In 2016, Pele auctioned more than 1,600 items from a collection he accumulated over decades and raised £3.6 million for charity. In 2018, Pele founded his charitable organization, the Pele Foundation, which endeavors to empower impoverished and disenfranchised children from around the globe. Death and Funeral In 2021, Pele was diagnosed with colon cancer. He underwent surgery the same month, and afterwards was treated with several rounds of chemotherapy. In early 2022, metastases were detected in the intestine, lung, and liver. On November 29th, he was admitted to the Albert Einstein Israelite Hospital in Sao Paulo due to a respiratory infection after he contracted COVID-19 and for reassessment of the treatment of his colon cancer. On December 3, 2022, it was reported that Pele had become unresponsive to chemotherapy and that it was replaced with palliative care. On December 21, 2022, the Albert Einstein Israelite Hospital, where Pele was being treated, stated that his tumor had advanced and he required greater care related to renal and cardiac dysfunctions, therefore, he was not allowed to spend Christmas at home, as his family had wanted. Pele died on December 29, 2022, at 3.27 p.m., at the age of 82, due to multiple organ. Failure, a complication of colon cancer. Pele's death certificate stated that he had died of kidney, Failure, heart failure, bronchopneumonia and colon adenocarcinoma. He was survived by his 100-year-old mother, Celeste, who, given her advanced age, did not understand her son's death. Pelea's sister Maria Lucia do Nascimento described their mother as, in her own little world. Tributes were paid by current players, including Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo, Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi along with other major sporting figures, celebrities, and world leaders. The outgoing Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, declared a three-day period of national mourning. The national flags of the 211 member associations of FIFA were flown at half-mast at FIFA headquarters in Zurich. Landmarks and stadiums lit up in honor of Pele included the Christ the Redeemer statue and Maracana Stadium in Rio de Janeiro, the headquarters of Conmebol in Paraguay and Wembley Stadium in London. There was applause and a minute silence at matches in honor of Pele. Pele's funeral, which involved his body being publicly displayed in an open coffin which was draped with the flags of Brazil and Santos FC, began at Vila Belmiro Stadium in Santos on 2 January 2023. Thousands of fans flooded the streets to attend the first day of the funeral service, with some in attendance claiming that they had to wait three hours in line. The public wake would continue to January 3rd, and saw more than 230,000 people in attendance. Many in attendance were wearing the yellow and green number 10 Brazilian jerseys and the black and white Santos Football Club jersey, which Pele wore during his career. Brazil television channels suspended normal broadcasting to cover the funeral procession. Pele's wife Marcia Aoki, his son Adinho, FIFA president Johnny Infantino, Conmebol president Alejandro Dominguez and president of the Brazilian Football Confederation Ednaldo Rodriguez were among those in. Attendance. It would continue on January 3, 2023.
newly sworn in Brazilian President Luiz Inácio. Lula da Silva was also among those who attended the wake. After the funeral procession, Pelé was buried at the Memorial Necropole Ecumenica. Kigali Pelé Stadium in Rwanda was renamed for him in March 2023 by Rwandan President Paul Kagame and FIFA President Johnny Infantino as part of the 73rd FIFA Congress. On April 26, 2023, the nickname Pelé became synonymous with exceptional, incomparable, unique in Michaela's Portuguese language dictionary after a campaign with 125,000 signatories. Career Statistics Club Pelé's goal-scoring record is often reported by FIFA as being 1,281 goals in 1,363 games. This figure includes goals scored by Pelé in friendly club matches, including international tours Pelé completed with Santos and the New York Cosmos, and a few games Pelé played in for the Brazilian Armed Forces teams during his national service in Brazil and the selection team of Sao Paulo State for the Brazilian Championship of States. Campeonato Brasileiro de Salicos Estaduais. He was listed in the Guinness World Records for most career goals scored in football. In 2000, IFFHS declared Pele as the world's best and successful top division goal scorer of all time, with 541 goals in 560 games and honored him with a trophy.